OK, um, Napalm Death started effectively in 1981. You know, it was, it was actually a, it was a punk band, you know, part of the sort of along the same lines as the bands that were in the crass movement at the time, which was crass, obviously. Um, you know, conflict, flocks of pink Indians, all that, all that kind of stuff. Uh, tied in with the same kind of ideology, which was the peace, uh, freedom, equality, you know, all, all the good stuff, basically. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it started then. This lineup of the band didn't really come into it until 1989, was the first starting point for this band. And by that time, it, it had become like a hybrid of metal, punk, and hardcore, which it remains to this day. Which is which is grindcore, you know, for all intents and purposes. Um, which actually a former member of Napalm actually invented that term, you know. So so the band's kind of rolled with it, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean that was uh, the start point of the band really, and the the, the early development days. Um, the record deal sort of came about probably around about 85, something like that, was when it was actually uh, signed, I guess, you know. I mean, like any other band, the band did demos before that. And uh, there was a couple of flexi-discs. You remember the flexi-discs, if, if my memory serves me correctly, but the, the real proper first album was like 87, you know. Um, so that was the early days of the band, really. I mean, as for the par parallels with, with Paradise Lost, I mean, I was probably one of the earliest people to be in touch with those guys. I mean, I knew those guys since Paradise Lost had, had first started, you know, the very first early days. You know, I used to speak to Nick. I mean, Nick used to speak on the phone all the time. We were friends, you know, as... You know, whether you were in a band or not, we were, we were just friends. You know, I liked him. I thought he was a really nice guy, you know. And then eventually I got to meet the other guys when Paradise Lost started to record demos and blah, 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 you know. So, and they, they were Napalm fans as well, you know. So, still are. St st still are, you know. So, it, it's great. I mean, they are... There's, there's a kind of misconception with them that they're kind of really miserable people and stuff, but they're really not, you know. They are just really nice people to be around, you know, and I enjoy their company. And um, I haven't seen them enough, you know, in the last few years. So hopefully at some point we'll be able to, uh, through some ways and means, get together again, you know. Yeah, we've done bills with them occasionally, yeah. We haven't actually, actually t ever toured with them, you know, so... Um, just very much, you know, because um, Paradise Lost and Napalm, you know, there are sort of certain... Um, parallels in the fact that uh, we kind of think along the same lines probably but the music is very different you know what I mean I, I, clearly you know Napalm is was and is still that grindcore thing that we were talking about earlier on Paradise Lost is uh, you know the how to pigeonhole it that epic doomy metal sort of thing you know very different but that's a good thing you know um, sharing a stage with them was just um I don't know how to describe that really. It's just, it was just nice, you know, to do it, be in the same company. And uh, of course, before the gigs, when you can sit down and talk and laugh about things, it's just, it's just nice, you know, it's just, it's just friends, you know. That's what a lot of this music always came down to, beyond the, the sort of uh, process of doing a band and being in a band. It, it, a lot of it came down to friendship, and a lot of people don't who weren't in the scene don't then maybe don't realise that, you know, there's so much of it counted because of the, the basic friendship aspects, you know, so. Uh, Paradise Lost was, was somewhat closer to Napalm in the early days, but it, it didn't really come really close, you know what I mean? I heard them, heard like the very first, I think it was a rehearsal demo or something, on a crappy old tape, you know, which is what we used to do back in the day. Because um, me and Nick used to trade tapes as well. Nick used to get a lot of good stuff, you know. Used to cram everything on a C90 or a C100 cassette, you know. And that was the way he used to hear good music back then, you know. But, I mean, it's in context of Paradise Lost, um, I just heard the 
you know, the first stuff, and I thought, I just, it just blew me away, you know. I mean, I was into really fast music, and, and I still am, you know. That's always been my thing, is fast music, you know. But when Paradise Lost came out, it was really slow, really heavy, really doomy. I just thought it was great, you know. I mean, it, it, the guitar sound was ridiculously heavy, you know. Um, Nick's voice was, was amazing, you know. Uh, the depth and, of it, you know, and the way he used his voice, I thought was... It just blew me away. Um, so, uh, you know, through hearing them and all the rest of it, um, I just really got into it. I think, you know, I, I don't, I'm trying to remember what was the first time that me and Nick actually communicated. I think it was just, I, I read about him in a fanzine maybe and it had the address and, and I just wrote to the, the address, you know, because people were saying good things about them. And, and Are you from well? No, no, I'm from Birmingham, which oh, Birmingham. is, okay. which is like it's a good 150 yeah. miles away, you know. But no, so I mean, it just started communicating and stuff, you know. So, and uh, it just went from there. Um, but yeah, they used to be a lot closer um, to what we were in the early days, and you know, it was all good stuff. But you know what? And, and I'm being really honest here, you know. I I never had a problem with Paradise Lost, the evolution, because they do what they felt needed to be done. You know, there's no point in them making, like, they did the first two albums, which were kind of along the same lines. Where else could they go after three or four albums of doing that stuff? They had to do something different, you know, because, it, A, it would have been boring for them. B, you know, as much as the fans say otherwise, I'm sure they would have gone, well, what else are they going to do? You know what I mean? So they had to go somewhere, you know. Um, and I don't really have a problem with what they did, you know, after, after the first three or four albums. I mean, uh, one second, I think the album is... I got that album. I think that album's great, you know what I mean? You know, OK, it's more poppy and stuff, you know. Yeah, sure, the guitars could have been a bit more prominent, you know. Um, but on the whole, I think... The songs, you know, you can take the album, you can listen to it and come away from it and you will remember the songs that are on there. You know, now, there's a lot of bands that put album out, albums out that, yes, might be completely chaotic and, you know, whatever, might have heavy guitar sounds, but, you know, how many of those albums can you then take out of the CD player and remember what you've just been listening to? Not that many, actually, in the grand scheme of things. So Paradise has always made an effort to, to write songs, you know, songs. Not necessarily mainstream hooks or totally commercial, but still songs, you know, that you would go away and remember. So that was why I, I didn't really have too much of a problem with what they did, you know, in the middle, mid-period years, if you like. So, uh, and now they... The album that they've just done, you know, I've heard the new album. Yeah, I think it's cool. I put it in my top ten of last year for a, a magazine, you know, because magazines do, and I put it in my top ten. I think it's cool, you know. Yeah, I do like the fact they got about heavy. Like I said, about one second. I don't have too much of a problem with it, apart from the fact that they could have put more guitars on it, you know, while still maintaining the feel of what they were trying to do at the time, you know. So. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're, they're good songwriters. And good songwriters will always make albums that you can come away from and listen to, as is the case with the new album. It's not just, yes, it's gone back to having more guitars, but it's not just recycling, you know, the same stuff, you know. It actually has a good impact.